So I just got done making a video about RabbitMQ header exchanges or headers exchange. Uh, this is using RabbitMQ headers to route a message to a particular queue based on uh, a specific ar a specific argument that you define. It's really, really powerful. So if you're interested in how you can create a really powerful uh, but unique solution in your system, check that out. Um, I should have that video up um, pretty soon. I, I just I literally just recorded it. So I, I did, again, I walked through the code uh, and how to set it up step by step. So I, hopefully it's helpful. Um, but this got me thinking about my last video that I made about reading. And, and I, I really can't stress enough just how important reading is when it comes to this job of, of software engineering. Because reading, I think, does one of two things. I think it, one, it, it, it forces you to isolate in this particular technology when, you, when, you know, when you're reading. Because if you're reading a book about, say, RabbitMQ, I'm only reading about RabbitMQ. And it forces my brain to, to you know, focus on a singular thing, which, it, you know, at least for me, helps me learn a lot better. Uh, but it, the other thing it does is that a lot of times I find in, in books, uh, the, the more programming books I've read, I've noticed that books tend to bring up less talked about ideas and technologies, and they, they tend to bring up less talked about solutions compared to, you know, maybe just uh, reading or skimming documentation or, you know, skimming a bunch of threads on Stack Overflow, whatever it is. Uh, while that's good and, and it's helpful to learn uh, of those things, I, I find I just something about reading, it, it just presents it in a way where it just help, it just makes a little more sense to me. It just helps me to learn it better. Uh, and I, I've noticed when I was when I was making this RabbitMQ video, uh, the only reason I was making it is because that this RabbitMQ book had a particular section talking about routing and custom routing um, keys and, and arguments. And you know, and I, I was thinking to some frameworks that interact with RabbitMQ create by default the exchange as of type fan out. And I honestly, I really wonder how many people are even aware of that, you know, of the exchange type being fan out and how many people are not even taking advantage of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of the fact of what fan out exchanges can, can do for you and really the power they can unlock in a system. Because if you're creating a system and you have an existing route, you can create a uh, you can use a fan out exchange in queues and leave the existing route of the system intact while in parallel creating a new route of the system and not affecting a single thing of the of the old system so you can theoretically create an entirely up you know updated or, or new system using something as simple as an exchange uh, a, a fan out exchange and but I think it's I think it's just you know, one, learning about these technologies and what they can do, but just thinking about them in a system design way. You know, how can I use fan out exchanges? How can I use queues to allow me to write, you know, multiple versions of my system in parallel? How can I use queues or exchanges and routing to uh, prevent against data loss, to prevent against, you know, errors in my system, you know, f you know, right? really data loss because what we showed in, a, in another video on my channel was retry policies and how those can I mean those can just save you a lot of pain and a lot of stress because if you set up a retry policy and then you set up some kind of error queue you know or I guess I should say error exchange that gets made that then routes it to an error queue but if you have that in place and you have a consumer off that I mean, you're not losing your data. I mean, it's going to get back to you unless something just crazy happens, which, you know, may happen. The data is going somewhere. And if it gets routed to that, you can make a really, really robust system with like one line of configuration we looked at, which is just nuts, which is great. But when we think about system design, it's really just the configuration stuff that sets it apart, that sets one system design apart from another. 
but it's the configuration stuff that for whatever reason just is the harder stuff to figure out and it's like you can read one source it'll tell you to do one thing you read it you know read one blog or or thread some word it'll tell you to do the opposite and it's really hard to distill that information down and, and, and synthesize it in a way where it all comes together and makes sense. That's why system design, in my opinion, is so hard because you have to piece all these different sources together in a way that's cohesive and in, in a way that makes sense. But I think reading, I think reading is is one way where that it, it, it starts to come together a little bit better. Now, I'm not saying reading about, you know, I'm, not so much reading about, you know, just how-to books or tutorials. I, I think I mean reading, really reading about the the specific technologies themselves. And Rabbit, reading about RabbitMQ for me has helped me to think about system design, I, I think, better and more broadly, but also be thinking about data, it, it, kind of tangentially to the whole thing, because if 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 my data is not is only going one way and something error is way down there down down in some other you know part of my system you know what 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 happens you know in the context of my uh, engines application that we've been making on this channel if my engine is sending 5000 messages per minute and there's an error somewhere in my system and i'm just losing all that engine data well then now my system has no idea of the state of my engine and that's bad, and that, that could lead to catastrophic failure of the engine. But if my system knows of when an error is happening because the error rate on the error queue is increasing and I have a consumer of that, my system can be aware of what's happening and alert me, you know, proactively alert me ahead of time rather than I get some fault later on in the system. Now my engine's overheated and now I have to stop it. So that's the kind of thing that I think reading about these niche technologies has helped me learn and kind of and, and just help me figure out a little better now it's hard sometimes to it's it's hard to take sometimes a theoretical and make it practical and I, which is why it's hard to find books that i i really would recommend it's hard to find books that you like and it's hard to find books that i think resonate with you at the specific stage you're at in development you know i because i look back on it when i was starting out me reading a book about rabbit mq in my first year of software development would have been useless for me just because i didn't have a good enough understanding of you know even cues at the time or why they were why they were necessary or like what all the benefits of you know using a queue in a system did I, so me, me reading a book like that would have been, honestly, might have done more harm than good. It probably would just would have just confused me even more. Um, but at the time, me reading tutorial books and how-to books uh, really is what helped me. So I think it just is like you have to figure out that, that path for yourself of like what book am I going to start with and what book do I want to get to? You know, do I, do I want to start with a you know, write up of ASP.NET uh, or, you know, React, whatever it is, and then that take that and then move to like a AWS book and then move to like a, a book like RabbitMQ. You know, you have to figure out what that path is. And honestly, I would write down the categories of what you want to read. And I would honestly, I would make a list on paper of, you know, each book you want to read or like are researching about those particular topics uh, for me uh, it was a lot of it came down to what the library had at the time uh, some of it came down to what I just happened to see on Amazon off a search um, some books I've found based on you know references and other books um, I, I would say that's not as common especially when you're just starting out because how-to books and tutorial books i don't think typically have as many references to other material as like you know a, a books on like a specific technology or more like on the theory um i found that how-to and tutorial books typically rely heavily on documentation so 
you might be reading documentation kind of at the same time as, as the book, um, which might not be the most fun in the world, but you might have to just to kind of start out with. But I think as you go and as you kind of learn what, where, as you kind of learn what you want to be focusing on, I think reading documentation is going to seem less and less of a chore um, and more of like, uh, it's, I, I can't explain it. It's going to feel, it's going to feel differently. And I think that when you get to that spot, I think you'll know, uh, like when I was starting out reading documentation was like the worst thing ever. I'm like, I barely know this. I barely know anything about this stuff anyway. Why am I going to like this super, you know, technical documentation? And I, it's, it's sometimes it's just, it's hard, you know, like reading that stuff. And I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's not, it's not the most exciting read to say the least. Um, but yeah, so I, when I think about reading, I, I don't think about it just from reading for the sake of reading. You know, I, I always try to think about it, you know, in, in the context of career, like progression and where do I want to be? Um, because I, I think that that really guides where, what books I'm reading at the time. Um, and honestly, I, I, I've talked about before on this channel, but the really, the main book I think that did it for me was it, it in terms of kind of laying out a path for where I wanted to go was the AWS certified developer book. It's about a thousand page book about AWS uh, services, you know, different cloud technologies and things like that. That book for me, I think, is really what instigated all this this reading on technical topics because it, it that was the first time uh, that I had ever really thought about one getting a certification, which I, I never ended. I actually never ended up getting a certification, but it got me thinking about it, and it got me thinking about a lot of different technologies that I would not have normally come into contact with if I had just stuck with like a .NET tutorial. Um, so I think that was the first time that ever I ever considered reading something outside of like my immediate like scope of like what I was working on at the time. Um, and it took a while. It took the first pass I went through that book it probably took about, I wouldn't say f maybe four or five months, maybe six. Um, and, but I, I really pinpoint back to that book as, as really the start of, honestly, my focus on career growth in software engineering. And I think that you need to discover what that book is for you that's going to do that for you. It might not be AWS, a book on AWS. It might be a book on React or .NET or RabbitMQ or system design, something like that. It might be something. But I think finding the book that gets you thinking about it or, or really just resonates with you, I think is what uh, is going to help you out long term. And I, I I can't really explain it, but I think that we've all found a book that we've, we've always just kind of been, you know, put on our shelf and then kept coming back to and picking up. For me, that, for me, that was a sort of the AWS book. Um, you know, it, it's kind of weird because I think about it and I don't really know why is that book because I read other ones, but yeah, it really just was. And I think that that's the, really the power of books is that you never really know which one is going to stick with you. So I think we all have to figure that out. I'll see you in the next one.